we're in another newness phase, a phase where things are being made anew, where we are being made anew. It's roughly a nine month period, which is not a coincidence. And this is specific to humans as opposed to other beings or the earth. And the clearings that we've been experiencing in the last couple of weeks, which have been extremely intense for many, 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 in many different ways, and regardless of how wonderful we feel while that's happening, the intensity has still been very strong. So there's been... For some who have really developed capacity to deal with this, there's been a kind of a both-and experience of feeling great and really beautiful energy, feeling great internally, feeling kind of comfortable and trusting and, and good about things, but then also feeling really crappy physically or having kind of recurrent issues with what's going on in the mind um, or even some like weird um, uh, external circumstances. These are all temporary. And it's just about this clearing. Now, the biggest clearings that I have been aware of for all have been related to the scraping away. And I use the word scraping on purpose. The scraping away of another layer of the sacrifice and martyr energy. So this has been really big and it's been uh, prominent in just the last few days in particular. And you may have felt some of this coming up in stories uh, that you've been having in your mind about what's going on for you, what you're trying to create next what's happening in some of your relationships or kind of in your in your business or income generating side of your life where there has been sort of a lack of clarity and and the kind of the lack of clarity has created different experiences so for some the experience of lack of clarity about what's coming next and what to create next has been oh well hmm, let me just stay super open and, and clean as much as I can. And by clean, I mean not letting other people's gunk or other energies or other stuff that isn't about me being as transparent a conduit or a channel for the deep sacred current of life force as I'm currently capable of being, understanding that we're always increasing that transparency, that clarity, that clean, clear uh capacity to be that pure expression of yourself, of your own unique energetic that came here to be expressed. So, and others are having the experience of trying to force and push, and many are having both, right, kind of pedaling back and forth between both of these, trying to push through to action, like, no, no, I need to know, I need to know, I need to do it, I need to know, I need to have have the information now and as a result of that falling back on old mental models about what that work is about what that action is about what that behavior is about what that story of whatever the thing is and these are not working and they're not serving so there's just like friction when you if you're doing that where you're like eh, er, eh, er, you know it's very kind of the tin man without his oil can feeling if you're doing that and the slipstream that I spoke about in the beginning of June is still entirely where you want to go where you want to be although you may have had some battles <laughs> internally to get there and that's okay that's okay like please don't beat yourself up don't allow any stories to take root around like, oh, if only I was doing it better, if only I was doing it right, or what's wrong with me, or blah, blah, blah. We are all, I don't know any single being in human form at this time, and I'm including myself in that, who hasn't had some of these friction moments, who hasn't had some of these moments of like, oh, what's that? 
I'm stuck. I'm the tin man without my oil can. Help. <laughs> right? And like, let's get this oiled back up again so we can get back up into the slipstream. So keep on thinking about that slipstream going ahead and let that become as much as possible a kind of a guiding light or even an organizing principle for you. Whatever your organizing principles may be for how you, uh, how you kind of organize your life, right? Okay, so this sacrifice and martyr energy, that can feel very kind of like, yeah, yeah, I have a lot of sort of stories in society about what that looks like or in modern life about what that looks like. This stuff runs deep. This stuff runs so deep, beloved. This is millennia, millennia, millennia embedded in humanity, embedded in it. Right? Like some for some people this may bring them into connection with, for example, the story of Christ's crucifixion. Right? That might be one. Let me tell you, that is like a new story compared to some of how old some of this stuff is. Okay? So it's there and it's getting scraped away. It's getting removed. And and the reason that it's being scraped away as opposed to just kind of like whoop, cleared away easily and gone is because of how like barnacled in it is. And I want you to think about different layers or think about different motivations or drivers for action. Many of us, where you can think about either being in action that is in service to self or service to others. Neither of these is inherently better than the other, by the way. And you have to kind of feel into when is it correct for you to be in service to self and when is it correct for you to be in service to others? And what are your motives for being in service? I have a little chickadee who's been visiting me and he's here and I want to make sure the cats don't get him. I'm, he's been visiting me a lot today. I see you, friend. Please don't stay here. These birds, these cats can't be safe for you, honey. Yeah, go, go, go. Good, good. Yeah, stay there. Better. Okay, we're just going to leave that in for everybody. <laughs> this little visit from this little baby chickadee. And he, he is a little baby. I have a special relationship with chickadees. Okay, he's okay. Yeah, you stay down there, honey. Or, or come around the side. He wants to be part of the transmission. That's why I'm leaving him in. Can you hear him? I think you can probably hear him. Yeah, just like cheep, cheep, cheep. Okay, so what is the driver? What is the motivation for being in service? Now, you may be able to access some of this through your mind, and you may feel that you have made choices around this. What I want to tell you is that for the vast, vast, vast majority of humans, that choice is actually not what you think it is. That choice is actually not a consciously made choice. It is not coming from that, you know, roughly 10% of yourself that is able to actually be in charge of decisions. It is coming from what is buried underneath. And it is probably coming, if it, if it is about service, it doesn't actually matter. It is probably coming from service from trauma or service for survival. These are the two vast, vast, vastly huge disproportionate drivers of service, service to others and service to self. And as a result, the gifts that come from such service are, um, let's just call them weak. And we want to, we feel within us the strength of the true gifts that want to come through us, that want to be expressed through us. And we feel that strength within us, and yet it doesn't come out, either to ourselves or to others. The little chickadee is, is, is coming back around the side. Stay up high. It's such a little one, it doesn't know. And the cats are newly able to be outside, and they don't know either what's going on. 
if they're actually cosmic beings in cat bodies, but the cat bodies tell them, murder, go be in murder. And that's fine. That's just their body's nature. Baby, are you okay? Okay. We're just gonna stay here. Okay, you're up high. That's good. That's smart. Mm -hmm. Hello. So, the uh, okay service. Yes. Okay. So we 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 often think we want to be in service to others in order to help them because we want to support others to be able to kind of come through whatever journeys we've come through or we want to bring more light and goodness into the world in some way now you want to look at are you sure that the driver towards whatever particular form of service you're oriented in that regard is not actually service from trauma where you are essentially acting in service from an existential threat of if you are not in service, then you're not safe. And this can go back to your human stories and go back to kind of when you were a child, but it also is much deeper than that. This is embedded into humanity's genetic code. And we're scraping all of that out. And there actually is a level at which you come into uh, service, certainly where you come into service that is completely cleared of all of this, cleared of the driver of trauma and cleared of the driver of survival because things are, are working and resources are coming in as needed and you are cared for and taken care of as needed, whatever that looks like. And the... And, and then you can come up into a place of service that is from clarity, service that is from a clear space of trying to be uh, essentially that channel of support for others. And particularly for the highly gifted, this issue of being in service can be a, can have been designed by you for this life, this kind of forcing function, this inner pressure towards service can be designed in order to keep you moving towards the awareness of there isn't actually a need for service for anyone, for any being. And I don't mean in a way of like, you know, be a jerk and don't help people. That's not what I'm talking about. We are entirely interconnected. It's about the idea that I have to be in service because the gift, the strength of the gift, remember, comes from essentially the whatever the resonance level that is the true driver, the true motivation for the service. Not what you think it is, not what's in your mental model, what's in your story about it, but the true resonance behind that driver is what determines the strength, if you will, of the gift that comes from whatever the actions are that are involved or from whatever you're bringing into form. And this doesn't matter if you're a writer or a painter or a filmmaker or a service provider or a therapist or a coach or a mentor or a teacher or, you know, a carpenter or whatever, right? So when you move up, if you will, and out of the service model entirely of the idea the mental model that i have to be in service and really it's not even about a mental model the energetics of i'm required to be in service then you can move into i am here to be what i'm here to be and i'm here to to express and my actions need to be as aligned as possible with what i came here to express the embodied expression of the deep sacred current of life force as uniquely channeled through me at this time and what does that want to come out what form does that want to come out in what is the create transmit create transmit create transmit rhythm and 
output that wants to come through for its own sake, for the joy of it, for the clear connection just to me expressing me. Then there is a gift that comes from that, but it is not the primary motive. It is a byproduct. When the gift is the byproduct, that is actually the highest resonance or strength of gift because it is coming purely from a true expression. Now, as I'm saying these words, I'm hearing some of it's going to be a little bit confusing and there are pieces that are missing from this information, but these are the words that I have today for you. And I think that for many of you, this will be enough to get started with this and working with this. And understand that service to self, as you move through these, is required, is required. Many of us, as we're dealing with the sacrifice and martyr energy, have put ourselves last or put ourselves fifth. It doesn't matter. Your job is to put yourself first. And again, not in a way that's being a jerk, (laughs) right? Like, we're not here for that. But putting yourself first because it's no one else's job to do that. It's no one else's job to do that. It's only your job to do that. And where that idea creates resentment and anger, yeah, good. Work with that because that's real. And that's about the fact that you didn't get taken care of when it was somebody's job to take care of you. Because when you were little, it was somebody's job to take care of you. Just like if you have children now, it's absolutely your job to take care of them. And if you didn't have your needs met, and very, very few humans in modern humanity had their needs really met, then you're going to have resentment and irritation and frustration and friction over the idea that, oh, it's, it's nobody else's job. I have to do it. Or you might feel abandoned by that, right? And it might bring up a bunch of kind of abandonment issues having to do with, you know, whatever attachment style you have. So, again, these are all kind of good things and important things to be working with. And... Also around you, there are people who are jerks, right, who behave badly, who are not paying attention to any of this, who don't care about any of it, who have no sense of desire to better themselves or the world or others. And that can make you very angry. And there's nothing wrong with that anger. That's sacred rage. That's sacred rage. And allow it. Allow it. Absolutely allow it. If you're experiencing a ton of sacred rage uh, at this at this stage, I really want to recommend a I believe it's a free um, uh, session that uh, uh, a, a wonderful, incredible, oracular uh, transmitter uh, and friend. Her name is Maya Luna um, is doing. I think it's on the 16th of July. And I think I'm recording this on July 11th. I'm not sure. And um, and go get into that if you're feeling sacred rage stuff, because she's going to do she's doing a specific thing for that. And I'm sure it'll be wonderful because she is wonderful. So. All of this scraping away and clearing away is also part of the kind of revealing of what's really going on, the revealing of the motivations and the drivers behind our behaviors, the motivations and the drivers that are driving what's going on in society, that's going on in the world, that's going on in the planet. These are things, these are energies, these are, these are motives that have been in place for thousands and thousands and thousands of years using kind of human time as a comparison. And they are no longer being accepted. They are no longer being allowed. They are being removed one after the other after the other. The portals allowing this energy to flow in and through humanity are being closed one after the other after the other. They are being sealed with gold. And you can be really angry about all of this. That's cool. That's appropriate. Or you can be done with that anger and, and, and carry on. Whatever kind of layer you're at around this is all great. Be wherever you're at. And if you're at a place where you're like, yeah, I, I've, I've done that anger around that and I understand that that's in place, I want you to know these portals are being sealed with gold 
And the gold is then creating kind of a sphere of gold in place of where kind of the portal was. If you think of the idea of sort of a black hole or wormholes or whatever, those are cl being closed. And this gold sphere is coming in place instead, blocking any of that from coming into humanity. And also, at least in the work that I was doing with this this morning, based on some closures I was involved in yesterday, I was bringing in working with essentially the opportunity for that gold, if you will, to be available to any of the kind of um, the energies desiring to take advantage of humanity trying to come through that particular portal running into that particular golden sphere on one level it just bounces them out like sorry de access denied right but for some of them that gold is actually activating the gold within them because the gold is within us all no matter what and activating it within them and creating opportunity for them to choose differently as well which feels really beautiful to me and reminds me very much of the the work when the the sort of the splinter of the track on humanity's evolution was removed in the spring of 2021 which if you haven't seen the Evo Leap video describing that, it's on my website, melaniegillespie.com um, forward slash Evo Leap. It's only a 14 minute wet, uh, video, but very activating. I still find it activating um, when I'm guided to watch it myself. And, and it was created kind of in a sort of semi-fugue state, very much by my cosmic self. Um, I don't make a lot of videos, as you know, but um, but this one is very fun. And it's not me talking, I mean, it's me talking in a transmission, but it's, the video is um, organic images kind of put together to support the experience. And there's a transcript there as well. So we have this nine month newness and within this nine month newness, there are many smaller uh, phases. So it's not like, oh, we're just in this until, and it's not about, uh, oh, I'm, I'm not going to be kind of, quote, gestated out until the end of the nine months either. Um, like I've already personally had the experience of new being, oh, now a new being, now a new being, now a new being, like many times, even within the same so-called day. And and so that's the nature of this is that it's like, boop, newness, oop, boop, 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 uh, to the extent that that's relevant for your being. Right. So. Just keep on in the slipstream, keep on going, care for yourself, access supports wherever you can that can understand and work with where you're at. Um, and that doesn't have to mean, I mean, it can mean, yes, like professionals that you're working with, but it can also just mean who's in your world organically, naturally, socially, uh, you know, your friend world or your family world, who can handle just being with you when your heart is tender and loving you whether they understand any of what's going on or not we don't have to understand all of this it's not necessary i know we like it and our mind wants to understand things and we do need to some extent mental models to help us keep moving forward but we don't have to understand the whole thing so if you are someone who's been really stuck in the intellect side of this, then I just encourage you, and this is true for anyone anyway, but I just encourage you to, as much as you can, kind of get out into the natural world and give this over, give this over. One thing that's been really helpful for me, um, of course, is, you know, swimming every day in the lake, but also, and, you know, all the kind of things that I'm always talking about doing in terms of, you know, being on the earth and nature and the various things that you're doing with your body, blah, 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 whatever they are for you. Um, but I've also been uh, giving myself specific time lying down um, on the earth with my hands and my feet and my head in particular having bare contact with the earth and working with the mycelial networks, and I've spoke about this in other transmissions, coming up to clear to clear and to take away and to remove that which has, has died off 
which is no longer needed or useful um, or just simply was never needed or useful, but is now being removed or cleared to take it away. And I experience them like this morning we were doing this and I'm just doing this regularly now. It's just a kind of a normal thing. In the past, I used to do this based on, oh, I feel there's a thing to be worked with. Now I'm just currently in a phase of just, I'm just doing this every day, right? Like, you know, sweeping the kitchen every day, sweeping, <laughs> sweeping the energy body with the mycelial networks on top of the other things that I do now every day. And, and I was experiencing them like this beautiful, beautiful um, kind of silvery white light, super fine filamenty energies that were like playful and laughing and coming in and sort of like, yippee, like, here we go, yummy, 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 because all of the, of course, the gross dead stuff is food and they are going to decompose it and, and, and deal with it and eat it up. And then they're going to churn it out and turn it into new stuff. Just like an earthworm moving through the soil is going to take that stuff in, do cool, wonderful things with it while it nourishes it. And then it's going to poop out the new amazing soil that is like the best soil that every gardener wants in their garden. So, so play with that, work with that. I really, I really hope that you will. And let me know um, if you feel to how you're doing and what's working for you around all of these things. Um, and yeah, and the founder codes continue to unfurl for people. And I have made the, I, I am making the complete library um, of those available as a digital offer for people on um, the, the full launch of that uh, coming soon. There's some kind of early bird pre-sale options available for people now. Um, uh, ping in if you if you want information about that and it's a huge library I mean we're talking over a couple of years of materials guided journeys and kind of teaching materials support materials support for integration etc and uh, I'm really excited about being able to make this more available than uh, than they have been only just through really private work with me um, or or small group um, which has been very limited in terms of who, who I, uh, who I align with to work with, and then also um, around kind of financial resources. So this should be much more available for people. So that'll be really fun. Um, and yeah, okay. I hope this is finding you in a place that you're feeling uh, now supported, connected, remembering again who you are easy during times like these to forget who you are and what you really came here to be and uh and that you are are excited about the, the kind of the current phase and enjoying it um i know I, i'm feeling very excited about things and uh, um yeah it's a beautiful time all right i love you thank you for your light in the world <laughs>